but they're going to a place like northeast Thailand in the villages a long way away from anywhere there there were subsistent farmers who just had very spare cash and would live on a barter economy just growing rice and whatever they could catch especially fish in the rainy season and building their houses of whatever can be found in the forest or in the fields and you saw there that some of those people were just so poor compared to the poor student I thought I was. I was actually very wealthy compared to them. But one of the things which I did notice living in that village, yeah sure many of those poor people were happier than the people I knew at sort of a great university like Cambridge, but I also saw some miserable people in that village. And when I saw those miserable people in that village I wanted to find out why that some people were miserable, other people were happy when they both had very few things. And I found out that basically it worked out like this. Every house had a water buffalo which they used to plough the fields and the, the dung from the water buffalo would be the fertiliser for their fields and the buffalo would plough the fields and do all sorts of tasks like pulling the cart. It was a very uh, important part of their house. But I noticed the farmers who had, say, one water buffalo and were happy with one water buffalo seemed to be the ones always smiling. But the farmer who had one water buffalo and wanted two, that was the farmer who was unhappy, who didn't seem to have so much time and so much joy in their lives. It seemed to me that happiness was not so much how much you have, but how much you want. And that started to make me think, you know, the basic question in life, how much do you really need to be happy in life? And does it really mean the more you have, the happier you are? And I think that's the great myth of our, ex of our modern existence, thinking the more we have, the more pleasure and happiness and freedom and power we can exert. <laughs>